This time on Video Game Takeout, we're going to try something new. It's time for our Puzzle, puzzle game, game Spectacular! spectacular. This week I'm going to review five notable puzzle games for handheld systems. So without further ado, let's get on with it, shall we? First up is Tetris Attack for the Game Boy. Tetris Attack looks and sounds a lot like its SNES brother. My biggest complaint is the lack of color makes it harder to see possible combinations quickly. This can be made a little better by using a Super Game Boy since it adds some color to the mix. The Tetris branding is unnecessary, and really, it's more of a Yoshi and Nintendo branding than anything. I think they probably picked the name because the original Tetris on Game Boy was so popular. This game includes nothing that has to do with either Tetris or Russia. Alright, so let's get down to gameplay. In puzzle mode, the first few levels are so dog simple that even an ape could do them. Like the first eight or so are just switching one block with another. Watch out, don't ramp it up too fast for me. It has passwords, which is a big plus, but I wish it had a battery so there'd be no way I could lose my progress when I'm out and about. But at least with passwords, once you beat a level, you can always come back later and try the next one. Unlike the SNES version, you can't take back one move at a time. Pressing B just restarts the entire puzzle. It's a small thing, but it can get annoying. Another thing I don't like about it is that sometimes the difficulty will be much higher for like one puzzle and then go back to being really easy again. Overall, I'd say this game is a lot of fun, but I suggest you look for the better and easier to find Planet Puzzle League if you have a DS. If you're still hanging on to your GBA for dear life, try the Dr. Mario Puzzle League combo cart. Speaking of which, next up, Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario for the Game Boy is a dead-on port of the NES Puzzle Classic. The only difference is the lack of color. The game handles it well by using solid black, solid white, and a checkered pattern to make up the three colors. They're easily distinguishable from each other, and it caused me no problems at all. In fact, if you're colorblind, I would say this is the best version for you. Other than that, the game is as you remember it. It's a great portable game since you can start on any level at any time, so there's no need to worry about passwords or the battery being dead after all these years. Second only to Tetris in the classic puzzle game's pantheon, I'd say this is one of the must-haves for a long car trip or bus rides. It might look a little funky sticking out of your GBA, but I like to think of it as a conversation starter. If conversations on the bus are not your thing, I suggest the more sleek and colorful GBA version. There are two. Dr. Mario, which is a straight port of the NES game because it's part of the classic NES series for the GBA. Or you could try the more modern Dr. Mario and Puzzle League for the GBA, which is more like the Nintendo 64 remake. Now on to an old favorite. Tetris for the Game Boy. Tetris. We've all played it, and it's awesome. Now let's move on. Coming in at number 4 on our Numbers Mean Nothing list is Mr. Driller 2 for the GBA. Mr. Driller 2 is like all the other Mr. Drillers. No different. It has a lot of dialogue in the beginning of the game trying to set up some kind of lame story that makes no sense about blocks taking over the world. It has multiple difficulties, easy, medium, and hard. They're all the exact same game, just for longer durations. Not only that, but all the modes are the same too, except for free mode, which is the same except it goes on forever. I really miss the quirky music of the PlayStation version of the game. Music is half the fun of Mr. Driller in my opinion. The game is pretty hard, but it gets better as you play more. Still, I can only beat about easy, and then I'm out. The main mechanic of the game is to see how far down you can drill before you run out of air. There are air capsules that give you more air on the way down, and breaking brown blocks takes away some of your air. There are no monsters to avoid or enemies to kill, it's just digging to the bottom. The main thing that is cheap in this game is that you can only see so far above you, and sometimes something will fall on your head that you could never see coming. As far as I can tell, the main difference between Mr. Driller 1 and Mr. Driller 2 is a girl character is playable, which seems like a stupid reason to make a sequel. But hey, it seems to work for Harvest Moon. There are three levels in the game, America, India, and Egypt. But there's nothing about the levels that makes them specifically American or Egyptian. They just made up places. They all look like Candyland. None of them look anything like India. If Mr. Driller were drilling into the Ganges, that might be a game worth playing. Every so often there's this little blue guy sleeping behind a block, but he does nothing. He just wakes up and runs away. 
What is up with that? You may not know this about me, but I hate time limits. If the game didn't have a time limit, maybe I could think about what I want to do next. But instead, I feel like I'm under the gun, and I hurry and make stupid mistakes. Anytime I try to take my time, I end up running out of air. It's stupid, and should at the very least have an option to turn it off or slow it down. Time limits are so 90s. One last gripe. I think it's ridiculous that a game with one button control has a configuration screen to set up the buttons. Hmm, should I enable or disable this button? Overall, I'd say pass on this game even if you're a Mr. Driller fan. It's boring, and it's basically 15 minutes of fun stretched out into days worth of playing to be able to beat the harder levels. Well, Mr. Driller wasn't as good as I expected, but finishing up our countdown, we have one last game, and it's a great one. It's Mario's Picross. This game is kind of hard to describe. I'd call it a cross between Sudoku's math and a crossword puzzle. In the end, once you have solved the puzzle, it makes a picture. That's how the game gets its name, because it's a picture crossword. Picross. As with many Nintendo puzzle games, a famous Nintendo property has been added to this game to make it more appealing. But the Mario half of Mario's Picross is just branding. Mario doesn't do anything except sit in the corner of the screen. It's very similar to Dr. Mario in that way. Picross has been a long-running series in Japan, but Nintendo hasn't let one over to the States since this one. That is, until the DS came out. Now with touch generations all the rage, Nintendo saw an opening in the American market and finally gave us another game called Picross DS. Picross DS takes everything that made Mario's Picross awesome and makes it better. New touch controls, bright colorful pictures, and no more silly Mario add-on. Picross is one of the best puzzle games to come out since, well, ever. So if you're a big puzzle game fan, I would suggest you check out both Picross games. I promise they'll give you hours of entertainment. Well, that wraps it up for our Puzzle, puzzle Game Spectacular. I hope you saw something you liked. If you know of a better game that you want to share with the world, please feel free to email me and I'll see what I can do about getting it on the show. I have a feeling with so many puzzle games out there, this might not be the last puzzle-themed episode we do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week with another serving of gaming goodness. Until then, I'm Ben. Have a great week. Trooper of the East.